So today we're continuing on our little staycation here in the northeast of the island, uh, staying near to uh, the town of Arta. But today we've gone a little bit further. We're, we're now in Cap de Pera. And we didn't know this, but today is market day in Cap de Pera. And so we're going to have a little look around the market. And then we're going to go off up to the castle and investigate the castle. So let's go. <laughs> we weren't really expecting market day today. I didn't, well, I didn't even look it up to find out what day market was in uh, Cap de Pella. So we intended to come here just to have a look around the village and also to have a look at the, the castle that's here. So. This is an added bonus. <laughs> Yesterday we were in the, uh, the market of Arta and uh, that was a really interesting market. And I guess uh, many of the stalls that were there in Arta yesterday will have moved on and come here today. Our first impressions of Cap de Pella, so it's very, very hilly. Um, we managed to find parking without too much of a hassle. First car park we went into, uh, parking was fine. We, uh, there were a few empty spaces and people actually leaving, so I guess some people had already been to the market. Again, the smell of the olives as we enter the, looks like the square, and then the beautiful fresh fruit and vegetables. And then the, the next smell that hits me is the, the roast chicken. So here, just like everywhere on the earth, it's very popular, it's the spit roast chicken. Lots of cafes, all doing plenty of trade this morning. It's nice to see someone from one of the restaurants going out to buy some local produce from the market. A much smaller market by the looks of things than the one that was in Arta yesterday. I think there's much further down the road there. Uh, fire store keep a need to happen here. So we're on vacation so we can't actually buy any flowers. It's cheap with lots of steps at the end. We've got a tourist information centre. So we're going to go up to the castle up there. Been doing some step counting over the last couple of days, and each day we've managed to do our 10,000 plus. Our legs and knees are telling me so. 
got big feet that should fit you. a little less interesting up here. If I see something else that's fascinating I'll put the cameras back on. We haven't actually walked very far from the market but we've already found uh, well, we found the Ayuntamiento, the uh, town hall uh, and right in front of the town hall there's parking and there are no blue lines so uh, there doesn't seem to be any restriction. This is actually called Blatha Jar. Lots of the streets uh, got no entry signs on, that's because it's market day today. I mention Sitjar because that's the name of the old Real Mallorca football stadium. Uh, And uh, well, Mallorca are playing the last of their friendlies tonight, so we need to find somewhere to watch that. Will be available, I think, on the little alleyways. Will be available on the internet on the Well Mallorca YouTube channel. So go on there, and uh, all of the friendly matches have been available. I don't think there's any geo restrictions on them. There's a nice little alleyway. Be high up already, don't we? We're very high up, yeah. I'm getting higher. So we're just having to wander around the back streets. These were never made for cars. Lovely old houses. Fascinating doors. And it gets very steep. <laughs> I think I might have to turn the camera off again. Some interesting things up in this. Sculptures. Wrong, isn't it? I'm just going to turn it off because it's getting very, very steep here. <laughs> As we get around the corner, we start to see the castle, but it's still very, very steep and still quite a way to go. I'm sure when we get up to the top of there, there's going to be some some great views so it'll make it all worthwhile and we will have our stack count even higher so we're making our way up this very steep hill we've just been passed by two cars i think i would fancy driving up here it's very narrow sorry maybe we could have should have gone Oops, Anita says we should have come that way. Well, I don't think so. <laughs> I quite prefer to walk on the road, it seems less exhausting. And go down that bottom. So some people have managed to drive up here. I hope they don't have to reverse all the way back down. restaurant. This looks so it's probably the entrance to the castle. Thank you. 
Eu achava que havia uma espécie de pânico. So it looks as though there's another road that can go and take you back down. We're going to go in, and there's a, a three euro entrance fee to go into the castle. So we've got to put our masks on because we're going inside. So, masks on. Let's go and pay our three euros to enter the castle and just look at the views. More of that when we get inside. I'm just coming here with the lady and the man. And we've paid our entrance and uh, we're now inside the, the castle walls. It's three euros each um, and uh, you pay with a card, you can pay with cash, you put the cash into a machine and uh, anyway we, uh, we paid with a card which seemed easier. out a little bit of the history. Pardon? So this uh, actually says, so we've got a thing here, it says it's an archaeological site that continues to be excavated. The southern area of the wall between the access gateway and the Ray Jaime Gate is part of the most, uh, with most of the remains to be found. Uh, as time has gone by, a large amount of stones have been unearthed and they were deposited here. There have been kept numerous remains of houses that have been buried here, some of which have been dug out and restored. So we'll, uh, we'll go and have a look to see what we can find. Safer than the one yesterday. Pardon? It's safer than the one yesterday. I go on one of those, nobody's ever going to be able to walk past me. So I think we'll go that way, up the wooden steps. It's like industrial archaeology when you have a digger like that. over the top of the village and it's built on a hillside so uh, it actually climbs the hill so there are places which are much higher for us to go you can clearly make out parts that were actually rooms and doorways When we were in uh, Arta, we went up to San Salvador and there was a there's battlements there that are kind of difficult to walk along. Okay, so we, we've come to a dead end. You can 
see the, the battlement there comes to a dead end and the rest of it remains unaltered. There is no uh, <laughs> no railing, which is what Anita was worried about yesterday. In Arthur there was no railing. So I have to walk back along here. quite hilly to get up here and once you're inside it's just as hilly. We have been doing some restoration. And already the views are magnificent over the village on the hills. We're going to go to the governor's house, which is even higher. where you can take a breather. And then just have a look at the views. Cactus. And we've got to go still higher. signs to the toilet. Oh, right at the top is a tower and up here we've got a, an exhibition. Oh and what a climb. actually is the governor's house which is from the 17th century uh, so during the 17th century the it was gradually depopulated and the inhabitants settled outside the the walls and in the 18th century uh, the establishment of the Bourbon dynasty of Spain led to political and military restructuring a permanent army controlled by professional soldiers. The Dragoons arrived at the castle and they were commanded by a governor who took charge of the defence and vigilance of the coast and the inland area. But by 1856, soldiers left the castle. And this is the governor's house and a permanent exhibition in here. It's quite dark. So we've seen lots of this basket work in the markets in the street. It's actually so dark it's difficult to read some of the things that are written on the sides explaining what everything is. to do the basket work. Sometimes these baskets are huge. Here they are to carry the carobs. These are carob beans which uh, can be used 
for cattle feed, but uh, now they're starting to use them to, uh, to make different sorts of food for animals and for, uh, for humans, including coffee and chocolate. Up a little bit further. So, until sixty years ago, the only way to reach Mallorca was by sea. First inhabitants of the island settled here around 5000 BC. Since then, the communication bridge of the Mare Nostrum has brought different peoples and cultures who have gradually formed Mediterranean society, customs, beliefs, and a character all deriving from the sea. and invaded over the years. And here's a map with the main castles. So this is where we are in Cap de Pella. This is where we live, very, very close to Belver Castle. And then there's Castle of Arraro, and in Poyenza, Castle del Rey, and in Felanich. That's the Castle de Santuari. That's what the Capdebella Castle looks like from above. with all the houses where people lived inside the castle walls protected by the garrison that was here. This is Alaro Castle. This is uh, another one of the castles I uh, have visited, haven't visited for a long time because of uh, various reasons, but uh, it was actually where I was uh, initiated as a scout. I took my promise as a scout right up the top of there. This is one I don't know. Castle del Rey. It's Poyenza. That looks very high up. That might be one we've got to visit at some point in the future. I always complain about graffiti in Palma, um, but here is graffiti that's actually telling us a little bit about the history. So some, some graffiti from hundreds and hundreds of years ago has actually given us information about how people lived and all that time ago. Well, we're back outside now. Just quarter past eleven, and uh, it's going to go a little bit higher. Not sure why those bells are ringing. I think there might be a bell tower here, and children are practicing their skills at campanology. defense tower dating back to the Muslim times 
of the 10th uh, to the 12th centuries. And it's high up, so it's located in a, a strategic point. Interestingly, it's got a square base uh, as opposed to a round base. And it goes to a height of about 10 meters. Somewhere where they store the stair, uh, the furniture. Oh, can't you go? Up? <laughs> you go up. So they've got boardwalks all around, and that's good because it protects uh, whatever's underneath from further damage created by. The visitors. And some reconstruction work here. Wherever you set up an encampment, one of the most important things to have is water. And uh, you're at the top of the mountain, that's kind of difficult. So this is a well. And it's, it's not a well that goes down to the water table, it is a, a tank that collects rainwater. So all the way around here all the water will be collected at the moment. It's been collected by what look like copper pipes uh, going down and there'll be a huge tank down below which will hold the water that can then be drawn out here or at other points. We're going to go still a little bit higher. I think we're reaching almost the highest point. Here yeah, they've completely uh, remodeled the floor. Here we've got the most amazing views of the town, Kapitara, going out into the distance. Over there, and the headland out into the distance. The property in front, which looks very interesting, they must have spectacular views. Just seeing the distance of light, it's going to be interesting to have a look at that later on, perhaps. But we're not actually at the highest point, so one question is I wonder why they didn't build right at the top there. Which is where they've got the antenna. <laughs> so our mobile phones are working. And it looks as though there's maybe some sheltered parking up there, so maybe you can drive up. There's this one other place a little bit higher that we can go. I suppose half a dozen steps. it is a high point uh, it has a lightning conductor so this pole here is to conduct lightning uh, there's a big cable there which will go down to earth and uh, they, they're often placed at the high points uh, for churches schools uh, it's been a bit of controversy in, his, uh, in the past when we first came here schools all had lightning conductors just like this one, you see right at the top there uh, is where the lightning is supposed to hit and then come down to earth, go down here and go down the cable. But to attract the lightning, they put a radioactive source at the top. I'm not sure any of these still have radioactive sources. And the radioactive source, the scientists out there, ionizes the air around it, and that means that the the lightning finds a slightly easier way to, to get down to earth. But obviously having a radioactive source near to a school became very controversial. And so the ones of the schools have to be removed or changed. Just while we're here, the house in front of us, I don't know what it is, whether it's a house or it's really as though it's in a spectacular position. But just beyond that is Menorca. 
So we've got a clear view of Menorca today. It's not crystal clear, but you can see. And uh, the bell that I thought was actually telling us the time, it's not the bell that's telling us the time, there are some bells here that can be rung. There's the, the tower, the lookout tower, which dated from the 10th to 12th century, so it's really old. I'm just coming over this way. And uh, there is a reservoir over there, and I think maybe we could see that from wherever we were. Yesterday must have been in Arta. And this uh, it's actually quite a nice looking windmill down there. Mallorca has some of the most beautiful scenery anywhere. So the, the information here on the castle says that the defence system here along the coast of Catapera used to be a chain of these watchtowers which were built from the 12th to the 16th century. The earliest of these buildings disappeared and the towers we now see were built in the 16th century. The system of signals and codes consisted of linking a number of warnings passed on tower by tower from the place where the enemy were first sighted in the direction of the city of Mallorca in order to organise its defence and send help out to any other point in the island which was being attacked. In the 16th and 17th centuries, the optical signals were made with smoke by day and by fire at night. You ready for the twin your spell? Go on then. Very loud, isn't it? You know, a whole village will be coming up here to take communion with you. It's allowed to ring you, otherwise that wouldn't be there. And traditionally these bells are made out of bronze um, and they do look as though they're made out of bronze that one looks a little bit worn this one looks a little bit newer and it's got a different tone hasn't it so you can actually play a two note tune I'm just dwelling up here a little bit because there's a lovely breeze I'm going to take my hat off because it's so hot. There is some cloud cover, so it's not so bad. You can see the battlements from here. And I guess that's how they would have been historically, these battlements. Uh, there is no protection. If you fell off there, it was because it was your own fault. You should have known there was a drop on one side and not on the other. The problem comes when two people are rushing in opposite directions and how do you pass? Well, one's going on on the inside and one's going on on the outside. Now I want to be on the side where the wall is, please. <laughs> so we head down. Just going to head down the steps now. We've been up enough steps, so we'll start going down. So. <laughs> Sound like a lot of fun those bells, but they're very loud. Annoying after a while. And a big word of warning, this isn't a place for you to come if you have mobility issues of any sort. Uh, it's uh, very steep, very lots of steps, and it's uneven. Uh, it's kind of difficult to walk. There's a nice bench down there in the shade. I might sit down there for a minute. Taking the views. down on the castle gate which is where we walked to when we first came into the castle. <laughs> I 
I've had an interesting walk around uh, the Cap de Pera market and the village. It's very, very hilly, and we've just come up to the, the castle, which is even more hilly. I uh, hope you've enjoyed this video, and thanks for watching. And if you haven't already subscribed, hit that subscribe button, hit the bell. We look forward to seeing you in our next video. Bye for now. Bye.